Okay. Hopefully this player is going to stay on with us. Playing this over the board situation. Going to develop the knight. Almost forces you to move fast and that's not the idea. The practice for playing this over the board is to be able to take my time and visualize as I'm playing the game. I, should, I don't want to feel that pressure of I have to move fast because the person's gonna resign because they don't have the stamina. Let's go here. All right. So it's attacking the pawn and we could just bring our bishop out. I believe that's what we're going to do. try and stick with what we know as best possible keep it as safe as possible but if there's those opportunities to oh okay so it's attacking straight away now we do have options we can take that knight off the ball because it's going to open up one of the pawns it's very basic but Simple is as simple does. I think we're just taking the knight off the board to save any confusion. Let's just take the knight off the board. Don't overthink it. That is hopefully what I do in the over the board situation. Okay, so it's uh, doubled his pawns up. So we're fairly comfortable with that. And there's no rush for the king so it's touch move so I have to move the piece if I touch it so I've got to be careful but that felt fairly okay doing that might have been a bit of soft move but there's nothing major at the moment so they're moving quick looking to go on castle and I am tempted to just bring the bishop out onto the knight so all these are basically preliminaries, so I want to go and castle, as we've always mentioned in our games. Again, the pressuring, so the what they must like doubling their pawns, and like we said, there's not nothing majorly wrong with it if you're comfortable with having double pawns and you know how to work them um, towards the end game. I am taking. just for the simplicity of doubling the pawns. Okay, we'll deem it that the opponent has got two weaknesses at the minute, they've got double pawns. Um, it can be a strength, people can make it work. Um, I like double pawns because it gives you space for your rooks to work with. So that's the positive side for it. So I'm actually going castling, but before I do that, because I'm in narration mode there, that pawn's got no protection on, we can't hit it at the minute. Let's castle king safety. Um, was expecting the castling, but they're not castling, so let's go here. And when we say that they don't castle, it doesn't mean that you've won the game just because they haven't castled it might be an advantage to you if they haven't castled if you can make it work for you so he's there uh, brought the bishop in it's blocking off all this file here um kind of stopping this but we're not doing that at the minute maybe just develop the knight out and there's no major areas to actually go for is there this pawn's going to be under attack from the rook anyway. Let's bring the knight inwards. So it's not blocking the pawn.
So currently I don't really have anything to give the opponent to think about in order to stop them from castling based on the opening. Obviously we have done really I suppose in a sense by actually capturing the pawns um, and they're pushing down with their pawn again that doesn't mean a negative we have to prove that it's a negative um, it could be sites of pushing the c pawn getting the queen to here attacking this pawn but that looks a little bit too obvious and it's pretty we could attack through the center here with e5 or we could just block that pawn from pushing further down pushing a5 in in the mantra it's like um stop the scud missiles from coming down so you just push the pawn up and block it off looks like they're being a little bit maybe lazy that's a lazy man's move so we'll maybe think about just blocking that off so it looks like we're I think we're going to have to positively think about actively defending here. We could still push the C-pawn, but then if we did push the C-pawn, the Queen isn't going to get there anymore because he'll push his pawn down and his Rook is defending. So I'm going to let the lazy man's chess win out. I think I'm just going to go A5 and block it off. Keep it simple. There is the other tail which the queen could sit on b6 but obviously the rook can come and challenge it so that might be dangerous. So I'm thinking c6 and then we could push this pawn up here but really they're not going to give us that time. So let's forget about this c pawn. We're not going to get there unless of course the opponent makes a, a, an egregious mistake. So they must be contemplating castling at this stage now. We do have the E pawn, like we say, E5 attacking through the center on there. And if you have a look at the board, they have the two bishops. Apparently the two bishops are a lot stronger than having the two knights or something. Smallest of potatoes, the position has to be correct. have a picture of a, a pawn storm all these pawns come ramping down now because he's got doubled so he's wanting to make them stronger bringing this one here blocking off and supporting with his bishop and just playing a kind of dry game like that you could push this bad pawn and make it a positive onto our b pawn d pawn sorry there's lots of things that could happen
And what did it say? Envisage the pawn storm down on this side. Probably leads me on to pushing e5 onto this pawn. He's one move away from attacking our knight. Knight does have space to come back here onto e8. So I think it's safe to say they're probably not kingside castling. So if we push e5, it's going to push g5. So maybe we move the knight out of the way first. e5 g5 knight jumps back to e8 he might be yeah because then because then his pawn takes knight takes queen's defending the d pawn Okay, let's go with that. We're pushing with the expectation of a quick G5. <laughs> yep. Okay, so bring the knight back. Just bring it back here. So they can move fast. This feels like a proper over the board match already. Just tensioned up, putting pressure towards the king area. Although it's not immediate looking pressure, so this is why I'm not getting too twisted about, about it. You can expect like the rook to be sitting here behind the pawn. So it's not like a direct attack at the moment. So he's supporting his pawn. So we can take the pawn on uh, D or we can push up onto his E but then he locks down. If we take, it's bringing his queen into the game a bit more. He supported that pawn because our queen is not going to take it because his bishop's on there. Could push our pawn up, the g6, just to block off. But then this pawn is coming down. And if we don't take, he pushes down a bit further. So then he's got like a little bit of a trap going there in front of our king could push f6 but again he's probably just dropping down and then we can lock that down there if he wants to do that so there's particular options I think I quite like f6 but it's white square diagonal just making sure f6 is not going to entertain taking we might even just leave it there if he leaves it there, we can push the pawn up. If he takes, queen can take. And then he's going to feel good that his bishop can actually come here, pressuring our queen. And if our queen goes onto the white square, then he's going to feel good that his bishop can put a check on our queen, but we can take the pawn.
I think that's some type of picture. F6 seems good to me. I might rule the day, but let's go with F6. It does make space, if he does take, it does make space for the rooks to start working the way down if they eventually get linked up. And he does have his bishops facing in the right area. Queens in the action. Queens in the action. So if we do a knee jerk reaction and push onto the queen, this pawn can take, we take, and then he wins two pawns. If we push the pawn up, like we said, if he wasn't going to do anything, then it sort of manages the threat potentially at this moment in time so pushing past and then there's the element of being able to push onto the queen if he stays there yep so i think f5 because the rook is supporting i think i know i sound like i know what i'm talking about but I, <laughs> you know i'm just talking because i just like playing i might not be finding the best moves at all He's moved dead quick, so he's attacking the pawn here, but we can attack the queen like we said, but also attack this pawn. So with them moving fast, it's like we've kind of either missed the trick, because we can go c6 and support the pawn if we're playing dry like that. Or if we pushed e4 onto the queen, pawn takes, and then the f pawn takes and we're on the queen so the queen has to move I feel like I'm missing something here so I'm going to push the pawn onto the queen so it does take uh, have, yeah, we take, and we're still on the queen, so he has to move, or get taken. To the far side is on the rook. So we need to be defending the pawn really, don't we? Or is there anything better? Can't really see anything better at the minute. Could bring the knight across attacking the pawn but also defending it's obviously going to take but he could push down onto the knight hmm what's his what's he planning i think just a simple pawn support 
should suffice. I feel like I'm falling into some sort of trap, but I just, my rooks really aren't linked up either, so I've not really got a good position with them, but neither have they. He's really speeding up, isn't he? Let's go here. And let's take that back. When they start speeding up, I think that I can feel their adrenaline rushing, like they've got a, a tactic going. He's going, look, he's got, he's ready, he's revved up. He's revved up. I'm like, I think I'm looking at the knight, but the knight can't go there just yet because this knight's blocking the queen, protecting. goes here then bounces to here it's attacking the bishop trying to get that out of the way I think it's probably appropriate going here but then his rook can come and attack the knight then he's on our pawn hmm, if we come here with the queen come here with the queen <laughs> looking for an exchange that's a bit cheap isn't it yeah, don't know if I like that because the pawn will be taken later on. If the knight comes here, the queen's protecting the knight, the rook can still go and attack it anyway because then if I decide to move there... Hmm... Hmm... Interesting apples. Can't even attack the queen here because there's nothing supporting my queen. This king is very airy, but let's not lose sight of that. He's pushing these pawns further down the board. And I'm hoping his pieces don't look like they're working together. I need to get some space. There must be something. Ah, dearly there. Okay, what about this knight coming here? To go here. No, that don't like. I like the other one coming here to go there. But I need to move this knight out of the way. I think I'm going to lose tempo by doing that. Hmm. What's he doing with that queen? Or is he doing a double dose, bringing his bishop back? He can't bring the bishop there though. I'm actually going to bring the knight across. Which knight is it? This one? Yep. Yeah. Wow, never seen so much speed. Okay, so if we push the pawn up, what do we create? Are we creating a diagonal somewhere? Queens, that square, this pawn is blocking all access to the king. His white square bishop dancing here, maybe coming here. Hmm, that's an interesting one. So I feel pushing the pawn up should work. push the pawn up and see what's happening they're moving like it's a blitz match now they've definitely got some tactic thing sorted out and I'm probably falling right into it I can feel it in the water so potentially looking at maybe looking for a queen exchange rather than actually dancing the night Queen's by castle in. Guy keeps castled. He's castled into. I'm just going with what I've said. I don't want to overthink it.
it does capture does this give us a bit of a two on one position on this c4 attacking the bishop if the bishop takes then the knight takes oh i've not taken <laughs> okay let's grab here Still moving quick, okay. So his rook's defending this pawn, it's coming blasting down on the f3. Uh, so, do we go and attack the bishop with the knight? Bishop takes, knight takes, and then the bishop moves out of the way but gets taken. We're playing them apples. Yeah, okay, let's attack the bishop. Which one was it? That one. He does capture, or she. So we'll capture back. Uh, duh, duh, duh. So we're still on the bishop. So the bishop looks like it'll be taken off the board. think is a good thing it's probably going to move it though to the um, rook that's in front of the next to the king or does he want his pawn to be blocking our pawn so it's pretty even Stevens positionally on the board well not not positionally but pieces on the board He's defending with the rook rather than. Okay, so yeah, okay, so his rook's coming down. Doesn't want to split. Don't doesn't want to bring his pawn in front of our pawn. And that's a bit unusual. So we don't have to take the bishop because it can be taken at any stage. He's, he still can't move it. He can move it to here. The rook takes. Can move it to there. The rook takes. Can can we reposition? Rooks in the game. Tucking this pawn here with the rook and then doubling with the pot, um, other rook. This bishop definitely can't escape, can it? No, no, no. So if we go f5 with the rook attacking this, the bishop's there protecting, but if we then take that bishop off the board, we can take this pawn. And if the rook comes to defend, we can take the other pawn. It seems a little bit too straightforward, dude. Um, okay, let's go with f5 with the rook. Right, I don't need to go into speed up mode now. If they're just going to leave the game you know, for if I'm taking too long with calculation, then so be it. I've got to practice doesn't look like they are this one this one looks like we're going to play through and the pawns come down so we do take the bishop we do take the bishop with the knight if the rook takes he might go well no I'd rather go for a rook exchange than lose a pawn we would potentially be owning the file because our rook can come here to then attack the rook it doesn't necessarily have to take it does have a pawn that can come down and mess this area up as well that's something to think about isn't it knights hunt the bishops now i think it's time it's quid pro quo time bishop takes or the rook takes for them. 
but it's equal amount of pieces on the board. Oh, crikey, at last. Okay, so they've taken... They've taken... They've probably been off somewhere to some magical kingdom, haven't they? Right. Hmm. Okay, so we said we're going to take this ball and let's just take it. Let's see what magic they're going to come up with then, hey? Kings come down. Tempted to just attack the H pawn now. They're moving quick now, it's like they've put some sort of magical juice in the system. Mm-hmm. Do we not just support? Yep. Attack this pawn and it come up. Oh, can't come up. No. Oh, hmm. Magical juices. I think. Doubling up on this pawn here. Let him have this. Make our way towards his king area. I think that's... That is the way to go. Because if I try and... He's going to just... He's coming up here. I don't know why he didn't go there. I, I suppose our pawn could just block that off. We come here, attacking the pawn. If he takes, then we take with a check on his king. If his king moves closer, then our rook can go up, putting a two on one. He'd have to bring his rook back rather than his king. So if we did that, he moves his rook back to protect the pawn. We can double up on that pawn. Okay, yeah, here. He can't go with the king. Because if we go here, then we're going to have two pieces on there and his rook can't get into the game. So his rook has to go back. And then I think... So his rook has to go back or... Or maybe the king comes here. But in any event, it's still the same because he's going to get checks on it. Let's bring the rook here. Let's try and use the answer. Cracky, he's made a move. He's actually taken the pawn or she. Okay. And. For me, I'm, yeah, I'm just looking, trying to keep it simple. It's not saying it's going to win, but taking the pawn in front of the king brings his rook up to defend, or maybe just moves his king out of the way. It should give us something.
let's take with the check I know that there's I'm gonna just run it through you you're probably all concerned about the rook coming here but obviously we can take this pawn off the board with the rook once the exchange happens with the rook but there's no guarantees he's bringing his rook back he might just attack our um, rook with his king okay so they've made the move they've moved the king here but then in essence that's almost the kind of mate situation because in fact I don't even need to take the pawn I'm just looking at the board now while we're in pause mode you know um, I come across here looking like I'm going to attack the pawn but then this rook can just go here and that's checkmate obviously he's going to do the little touch here with the rook on the but then he's got no legs after that oh dear okay let's go here oh nice touch nice yeah okay it's not over they might find some magic but realistically I can't see it he's actually put his king basically in a checkmate position he can't really get out of that He's not fast enough to get here to block this rook from here. He's definitely not fast enough to block that rook from coming across there. Wow, that was a, a lovely game over the board. It's tea time now. I'm actually quite hungry. Yeah, so he's come with this check here, but it really doesn't have any legs on it whatsoever. We can move it to the side here, but where else is it going to go? There's no more checks on there so we can move it quite nicely just making sure that I'm not falling into anything his rook can take the pawn but <laughs> really that's it you know what, what, what's it going to do because this rook is just flying down here for a checkmate so I can really basically make any move can't I shall I just make this move so that at least he's not taking a pawn <laughs> it's not really making any difference checkmate Ooh. damn I need to have a look at the analysis on that because I don't think we were winning at the beginning part of that game at all really I think we kind of not clawed it back I felt confident with what we're doing but it wasn't as meaty as what it could have been um, I was really confident about doubling the pawns up, that type of situation. So let's just have a look at the um, the eval bar. I'm all crunched up here, but let's have a look when it's ready. And that's an extremely long game. I will chop it down a bit because. Um, that might, that's a bit too long okay let's Oops. we're just looking at the eval bar just to check so we double the pawns there double the pawns there just uh, wiping stuff out. And let's put that there like that. Blocked off the pawn. Plus one point, nothing really. Yeah, so around about here, where they're coming forward with the pawns, etc. I mean, it's like single attacks, but nothing really to worry about if we can defend. Right, so then we attack here. So it's saying plus one point one there. So they did have something and plus one point something again so they did have something but we felt confident with what we were doing it nearly hit the two mark there 
so one point yeah so they're winning at this point even though we're putting checks on the king we had rationales for every bit of movement and now it's plus two so i really have to pay attention to what is what it's actually saying here really um queen b3 yeah yeah so the capture captures giving him pluses it's two points something yeah so they're actually out and out kind of winning there but they made the erroneous queen move but then look at that it's plus three it's plus three wow yeah look at that but I'm always quite impressed when I what you know go back on these evaluations and if I see that I'm out and out losing type thing it's up to the opponent to actually take those advantages isn't it you know excuse me especially as you're playing a human um, the computer sees stuff that probably a, a normal human wouldn't really even see maybe not even a grandmaster might not even see do you know what I mean so this is why sometimes you have to take them with a pinch of salt when it does hit the two mark it does it is something to think about but I looked at my position on there and I'm thinking yeah it, you'd be hard pressed to really find whatever it is they're talking about um, even in a long play game my position didn't look too bad the opponent looked like they were attempting to keep that pressure on so I'm fairly happy with that I don't feel like I made any major errors there it looks terrible on the back and that's basically what it's saying my pieces aren't really out they're not developed you know I'm stuck on the back so in a sense I would say that's the rationale that I'll take from that is that my pieces aren't developed but they're developing at the right moments at the right time we were there trying to defend we had to actively defend I think we mentioned it in the in the game didn't we looks like we're going to have to actively defend here because of the way um, that the land lay so the queenside castling was definitely a big no-no I did have a little bit of smile on my face thinking well I think we might be in here so we go for a exchange and mar of the queens so the advantage is a little bit on our side at this moment and whether we maintain it or not yes yeah, so we keep putting that pressure on a little bit at a time and now we can attack the unprotected pawn well it's going to be unprotected shortly so we grab grab doesn't like us grabbing the bishop but we take it anyway smallest of potatoes this is the type of game i really want to play uh, so we defend the pawn but then had a little bit of a glimmer of a thought process and thought well we can actually go around the back here yep it's one of my natural traits of the rooks have to get around the back somehow and, and work against the king it doesn't always work but on this one it, it kind of worked out trumps 